Hi friends, welcome to Transformation Unlimited YouTube channel. India is called as a golden decade. Do you want to know why? Here is our uh, yes, Sunil Kumar, Certified Financial Planner. I request him to open up. Sir, why India is called as the golden decade? Yeah, I call India as a golden decade, uh, not just golden decade, Gray Prakash. Huh. It is also a, a, a blessed economy, an economy which every Indian can take pride and say that I live in India in this golden age. The next 15, 20 years, okay. most of the financial pundits, people say that you, know, you are living in a country which will give you everything in all aspects of life. Mm -hmm. So let's discuss about why India golden decade. If you look at the global scenario today, mm -hmm. across the world, world is uh, sort of a, I will not say world has gone to recession, but a sort of a recession atmosphere uh -huh. is uh, currently uh, prevailing in this world. Yeah, yeah, US, especially after COVID? Uh, not after COVID, I'll say COVID, uh, yes, COVID was one setback. Okay. Uh, COVID was one setback and everything started becoming normal after first and second COVID. Things were slightly becoming normal. Hmm. Then I feel, I call it as a third COVID or the wor worse than COVID okay. is Russia-Ukraine crisis, uh, Jai Prakash Ji. Okay. You know why? Because uh, Russia-Ukraine war got into a lot of supply chain crisis. Yes. So the world is divided now into two uh, you know, hmm. uh, areas. I support Ukraine, mm. I support Russia, unfortunately. But you know, do you know what is the beauty of India? Neither we are supporting Russia nor Ukraine. We are taking a neutral stand. Mm, that is helping us a lot. Yeah, that is helping us a lot for sure. And mm. now, uh, once the supply chain crisis started, uh, Jay Prakash Ji, what happened? Uh, uh, every country is facing problem. Europe is into severe problem because there was a lot of dependency from Russia for oil. There is a lot of dependency from Ukraine also for a lot of other things. Now it has taken a supply demand crisis. There is a supply crisis. Demand has gone up. So US is into serious inflationary challenges. US is facing an inflation war. Right? Inflation is so high, interest rates have gone up. Okay. Right? Similarly, Europe, same thing has happened. So one country which is right now, I can call, we are do extremely doing good across the world, it is India. Wow, great. Even China has got problem. Okay. After COVID problems, and then, you know, they got into other challenges, China, Taiwan, US, uh, you know, US-China conflict, war of words. So China is, again, you know, recently there was a very badly, uh, a third pandemic in uh, China, if you remember. Six months back, a lot of lives were lost in China. So one country which is right now extremely progressive, everything is good in this country, and I call that country as India. Wow, great. Uh, uh, see, you please enlighten me about the GDP status. See, GDP is nothing but gross domestic produce. Correct. So, India is a consumption-driven economy. The population of this country is 140 crore. Mm. Let the viewers know, today <laughs> we are the number one populated country beating China. So, what was a curse is a blessing today. Why correct. it's a blessing? Because India is full of youth. Yes, full of correct. Your average correct. median age is 27. So, we are all consumers. Anything produced anywhere in the world, India consume India consumes so mm -hmm. from that perspective today and we are an, you know not only youthful nation we are a uh, english speaking nation we are a great yes. outsourcing to the world we are a cheap labor so india is consuming in every aspect gdp con contributes from all aspects whether it is move, going for a movie buying a vehicle going in hair going in bus traveling in train right uh, luxuries buying shirts everything contributes so that to the means GDP. consumption driven economy is yeah. helping yeah. a lot absolutely and you mentioned about the english speaking how yeah. this english speaking is uh, supporting us very good see consumption driven economy means one youth second you know anything you know produce you know we consume it uh, the question can you ask this question once again see the english language yeah. is supporting yeah. uh, for the our golden uh, decade. decade yeah how? How? See, what happens, you know, when there are so many English speaking, you know, boys and girls today. Mm -hmm. So, we are a cheap labor to the outside economy. For okay. US, uh -huh. see, if you to look at Indians are very successful across the globe, whether it is European market or whether it is especially US market, Indians mm -hmm. are dominant. Especially In, the, uh, whatever we call it as the uh, back-end job. 
BPO. Not yeah, just BPO. Voice. Yes, absolutely. You are right. BPO is also one area. Apart from that, you know, if you look at the key positions in US today, in any segment, whether it is defense, many NAS, CEOs are Indians. Many CEOs are <laughs> Indians, and a lot of migratory India Indians are accepted by others. See, we are a peace-loving country. India yes. has got that reputation that we don't wage war against anybody mm. nor quarrel. In the history of India, India has never, you know, on its own, never gone and fought against another country. We have always be, been invaded by others. Correct. We have never invaded others. <laughs> so people like Indians, and we are multi. We have this capability of speaking four or five languages. I'm sure mm -hmm. you know you live in Bangalore, yes. Namma yes. Bengaluru, right? I'm sure you know at least four or five languages. You might be knowing Tamil, you might be knowing Telugu, you might be knowing Kannada, you might be knowing English, you might be knowing. In and we Hindi. watch all the movies of uh, different languages ability to speak five languages yes, yes yes every indian every indian has got an ability to speak five languages so, which is very rare in the outer yeah, world here comes the power of communication friends uh, you should note this point and you should learn english language as a not only as a language it is boosting you it improves you it enhances you it transforms you absolutely <laughs> very well said yes see how this urbanization yeah. is helping for our uh, golden decade uh, see now where do you find maximum jobs employment hmm. right it is basically you know in the urban so a lot of people are coming from the villagers yes. and establishing so, see, if you look at a country like China, 60% mm. of people have you know, traveled from villages to city. Okay. The same thing is happening even in India. Uh -huh. right? People are moving from villages for higher uh, you know, wages, mm. for better lifestyle, especially I, lifestyle. Uh, yeah, even for higher education. Yes, for, especially for higher education, better jobs, better you know, pay, paychecks. So this uh, transcending, this transformation of going from you know village to city is happening big time in India. Maybe in the next ten years, sixty to seventy percent of the Indian population you know might live in cities. But as of today, India is an agriculturally dependent economy. Mm -hmm. We are an agri-driven uh, economy, correct, right? Correct. But urbanization is also happening rapidly. Yeah, and yeah. See, today India has out of 1,000, probably only 30 cars. Hmm. Probably we might witness 300 cars in the next 10 years. <laughs> so this is a small indicator. Infrastructure is getting better. Right. Uh, see, this year government has allocated 10 lakh 50,000 crores for mm -hmm. infrastructure. It means what? Better roads. You know, recently uh, Mysore Bangalore Highway. Everybody is talking about this. See, it means what? Everybody will make money. People who live beside the villages, they will become cities. Right, people will have easy access to cities. Traveling time will come down. Commuting time will come down. They say Bangalore, Mysore can reach in 90 minutes. Earlier, three and a half hours. So obviously, villagers will come and establish here. So infrastructure in India is trying, you know, changing big time. So good, good. Apart from this urbanization, digitalization is also helping us a lot. Uh, in my previous video, I, Jay Prakash, I spoke about how India has transformed into a biggest mobile network. Right? There are, India has got more than 108 crore mm -hmm. mobile users. One of the primary reason is because of the jam. Jandan Aadhaar <laughs> mobile network. Correct. India is basically heading towards a 6G you know, yeah, uh, yeah. culture now from Definitely. 5G. Sure. So today, you will probably find two, two mobiles with one individual today. So mobile has made life very simplified it uh, uh, they say everything in the mobile today entire you know world in the mobile so that's the kind of uh, uh, transformation uh, transcending society we have seen uh, jay prakash okay. ji how foreign uh, investors uh, uh, actually foreign institutional investors yeah. are helping see uh, india is a rich country uh, in my way today we have got close to 600 billion foreign reserves Forex and Tanavain LTV. Forex. Uh, so, Forex is helping India, uh, you know, uh, have a very good, uh, you know, capital base. Okay. So, a lot of money comes to develop developing economies. India is one of the most attractive eco economy in the world because hmm. India is given results like 13% uh, to 40% the Indian market has delivered such kind okay, of results. Okay. So it, re it remains to be very attractive for foreigners. Hmm. See, one more thing all of the viewers have to understand, Jay Prakash. A US has already witnessed, once upon a time US was a underdeveloped economy, developing economy, developed economy. So they have gone through this phase. Now they know India is from underdeveloping to developing economy. So majority of the things happen here. 
in developed economy you can't okay. get big, big, bigger results for example bank gives only 1% 2% you know interest rates in us in europe india is able to produce uh, 6 to 8% ret returns so we attract a lot of foreign institutional investors in both equity and debt market uh, jay prakash yeah what about domestic uh, green economy see uh, in after covid and recent russian uh, crisis we saw a lot of foreign investors withdrawing money also not only they put money they also withdraw money okay. if they find any other place as a better mm. uh, return on investment okay. so fortunately mm. india today is so much uh, uh, progressive thanks to covid thanks to digitalization <laughs> thanks to people like nitin kamath nama bengaluru na uruga right you know uh, there are so many demat accounts today mm -hmm. right so a lot of indians are investing in in indian equities through insurance through mutual funds through employee provident funds and through nps for example every month 14000 crore of money falls in systematic investment plan alone very 14000 crore last year india collected mm -hmm. mobilized 140000 crores into sip through sip that's a very significant amount of money. Okay, okay. So a lot of people are pouring money into, yes, into the th system. That's great. Apart from this, our country is a peaceful country. Yes. I think uh, this has added value. What do you yes. feel? Absolutely. Because if you look at the history, we have not got, uh, we have never uh, provoked somebody or we yes. never, you know, went invaded. out and invaded or fought against uh, our neighbors. Correct. We have a very good bilateral, you know, relationship. Yes, we have some strained relationship with Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But India has always sought peace. Peace is the first because people like Buddha, people like Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, right? Great saints like Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Vivekananda, mm -hmm. Rabindranath Tagore. If you look at Indian history, there are some great uh, people like Ramana Maharshi, right? India has always, you know, produced some great spiritual masters. Yes. Punya Bhumi we call. <laughs> now Vasudeva Kutami, we see India as, yeah. you know, one, you know, we see entire world as one world. Correct. So that's the message India has given to the world. Yes. So we are peace lovers we continue to be peace loving our our own kuempu yeah. says you know yen adaru agu madlu manavan agu one world one man or uh, one human being yes yes yeah. yes friends even i advocate human beings should be being human always and uh, uh, there is a, a fantastic comments uh, by our friend sunil kumar about the golden decade what is your opinion about this do comment uh, below this video and I thank uh, Sunil Kumar, Certified Financial Planner, for sharing the valuable information. Thank you very much, Sunil Kumar. I request viewers uh, yeah. uh, to basically uh, also visit my channel, uh, YouTube channel, you know, uh, inspired yeah. by you, we started uh, Jay Prakash, a beautiful channel by name, slavemoney.in. Mm. Why slave money? I'll just take another uh, yeah. 30 seconds. See, we are all from our system of school has taught us to be slaves for money, but here this channel teaches you Money should be slave for you. You should not be slave for money. So wow. that's the reason we start the, started a YouTube channel called SlaveMoney.in. Please like, subscribe, share. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe Transformation Unlimited. Please do share this information with your friends and family relatives. Okay. Bye-bye.